scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The prophetic seasons that are now upon us. Part one, we are looking at behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Genesis 1 and verse 14. Let's get to the business of tonight. There's a lot to do. Genesis 1 and 14. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs, let them be for seasons, let them be for days, and let them be for years. So there are lights that signify seasons, there are lights that signify years. There is a body of revelation that the believer can access and interpret seasons with. The Bible says, he said, these lights are not just for illumination. The lights are signposts to help you navigate seasons. Hallelujah. So when the Magi saw a kind of light, they knew that it was not just the earth, well, that the earth was brighter than normal but that signified the arrival of a king and they got to walk immediately tracing that light until it brought them where baby Jesus was so there are lights that are allocated for seasons hallelujah and if your eyes are not trained and your understanding is not equipped prophetic seasons can come and pass you are we together now and you do not know how to partner with prophecy and you find out that you abort many, many dimensions of your destiny because of lack of discernment. So I'll be teaching you um, through this series how to interpret the prophetic season that is now upon us as individuals, as the body of Christ, as a nation, and then how to partner with God even in this season. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. The Bible says, 3, 7, Amos, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophet. That means in God's economy, nothing happens in the earth that should take all men by surprise. It has never happened. There will always be a witness. When he was about to cause the flood to destroy the earth, it looked like a strange occurrence to every other person except Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives. Hallelujah. There will always be a witness in partnership with God. When it was time to destroy the prophets of Baal, um, um, Elijah was the man that God used. Are we together now? And he single-handedly brought down the prophets of Baal. So it is not consistent with God's character to do things on earth and take everyone by storm. Even the coming of Christ will not come to all of us as a thief in the night. The popular narrative is that he's coming to us as a thief in the night. Um, but that was just a sincere misunderstanding by theologians. The Bible never said he's coming as a thief in the night to everybody. Can we look at that scripture? I pray you don't distract me tonight. 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. Let me just clear the air on that. This is a place of education and enlightenment. By the way, I didn't do a proper preamble to my teaching tonight. I was, I was meditating on a very serious contemplation. Did you know that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the cheapest platform for transformation? 
every other institution on earth that affords transformation has requirements. The university will not admit everybody. There are certain institutions that demand an age range. They demand quotas from certain regions. Are we together? But the only requirement for the church is a willing heart and your journey right to where God is. The reason why we take advantage of the platform, the pulpit, to educate, enlighten, transform, and empower God's people is because the church is the cheapest platform for transformation. Hallelujah. That being said, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You see that now? Hmm. So cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 2. Verse 3 now. It says, for when they, are you seeing what Paul is saying now? When they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. If you are a Christian, shout verse 4 with all your heart. So it settles it once and for all. Ready? One to read. So do we have that clear now? All right, so let's go back to our teaching. That's not my, I just thought to bring that in. Because you see, your stamina in the kingdom is based on the degree of illumination that you have. The realm of the spirit does not respect you because of your biological, your physical age, no. The realm of the spirit respects you on account of the stability of your understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.10. 1 Corinthians 2.10. The Bible tells us that God has revealed them to us. The preceding verse will say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Apostle Paul now says, But God has revealed them to us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So we know for a fact that we can access deep mysteries in the spirit that can help us navigate prophetic seasons. Now, the believer's earth walk is broken into seasons. Hallelujah. And the most important of all seasons is not just the biological seasons, rainy season, dry season as we call them here in Nigeria, but the prophetic season because your the lifetime what you call your lifetime is a joining together of many prophetic seasons and the quality of your life holistically will be measured by the intelligence you have to navigate those seasons you can do well in a season past and lose discernment for the season that is now before you and you can literally lose your bishopric because you do not have the intelligence to discern nor to navigate seasons hallelujah those that remain in God's program, those that have longevity of impact are not just people who are zealous, they are not just people who are gifted, but they are people who can read the writings on the wall. Ten years ago, the church was going to enter a new season. There were people who predating those ten years were relevant, were at the cutting edge of God's prophetic and apostolic activity, but simply because for some reason they lost the Assignments to understand seasons. There are many things about prophetic seasons. Prophetic seasons come with a change in patterns. And if you do not have discernment to understand prophetic seasons, you will be using the jawbone of an ass where the duty of that jawbone is already over. It was once used to kill 3,000 Philistines, but it was not always used. Prophetic seasons demand discernment to change and to switch patterns, to know how to stand upon your watch, set yourself upon the tower to see what the Lord says. It is true that the Red Sea once parted, but it is not the only formula for escaping water. So if you stand before Jordan and you are expecting it to part like the Red Sea parted, you may die there because there are times the formula will be 
that the sea will part. There are other times you will be empowered to walk upon the water. There are times that the storm you will be inside. Yours is to verify whether Jesus is in the boat. So the rod, the boat, and your feet are all tools that can help you go to the other side depending on what season. Is someone following already? Many, many believers start well. They start well in ministry. They start well in business. The world is full of gifted people who are largely bankrupt of spiritual intelligence. And so seasons, prophetic seasons come and come upon them and they do not know how to navigate these seasons and people literally lose their relevance. And you hear people say, this man was once anointed, was once great. This business was once great. There are many businesses who had their seasons and they excelled but from an economic standpoint they did not have the intelligence to adjust to the world that was changing and today they have neatly been etched out of relevance and that is true even for ministers of the gospel that is true for families that is true for nations those who are leading the field in any area of life today have mastered the art of not just providing the value that keeps them relevant but they have kept an extra eye like wise men to watch seasons so that when they detect a change in season they go back spiritually economically politically to the drawing board and they reinvent themselves to remain relevant if you're with me already say amen, amen. so for part one we're looking at Isaiah 43 I want to show you a few things by the Spirit of God that will help and guide us let's read 18 and 19 Isaiah 18 and 19 part 1 remember ye not the former things hallelujah neither consider the things of old 19 behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it I will even make a way in the wilderness he says and rivers in the desert may the Lord bless the reading of his word the first point we need to examine in discussing this scripture is the statement remember ye not remember ye not please follow carefully that is a very powerful warning he's saying remember ye not he is attempting to guide your focus to something and he's saying the way the mind works is you cannot be focused on the past and on the future together are we together so he's helping to disconnect you from something so that he can redirect your attention to something else God is doing because at every given point your mind your attention your zeal your commitment your passion can only be invested in one aspect of your life and in this case this person here is focused on yesterday and its achievements or its failures and the prophet begins by saying remember ye not I wrote here over dwelling in the past or on the past whichever is appropriate over dwelling in the past or on past thoughts both negative and positive can hinder your advancement and your progress in life overdwelling on the past both negative and positive can hinder your advancement and your progress in life as simple as this statement is there are many people today they failed because they succeeded the reason why they became failures was that at one point in their life they were too successful to be focused there are many people today who became successful because they so failed that it brought them to a point of determination that they will not fail again. Here he is telling us that the past, whether positive or negative, can have an adverse effect as far as destiny actualization is concerned. The negative past I wrote here, the negative past can create fear, can create discouragement and it can also deflate your passion to press when you dwell on a negative past it sustains an ability to bring fear it sustains an ability to bring discouragement and to deflate your passion to press give us judges chapter 6 please we'll read from verse 13 to 15 judges chapter 6 is god helping someone 
Now follow carefully. And Gideon said unto him, the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and calls him a mighty man of valor. And look at Gideon's response. Go back to 13. Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be the miracles which our father told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord had forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? You thought Gideon would say, Wow, I'm now impressed. Look at his response, verse 15. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Dwelling on a negative past. Now you understand what I mean by it can bring discouragement. It can bring fear. It can deflate your passion to press. There are many people today who have lost out on their passion towards life, towards ministry, because their life is a plethora of negative occurrences. Financial problems, marital problems, health problems, ministry failure, maybe mistakes of the past, and all those things combined can become a weapon that the devil can use to deflate your passion. Do you know, I'm sure that every one of you here can bear witness that there are people who at one point you could trace their zeal. Their zeal for life was palpable. I mean, they, they were bubbling with energy. And a few years down the line, when they've been beaten down left and right by the vicissitudes of life, they watch you in your zeal as a young man and they say, Save Johnny, this road you are following, we once followed it. Dwelling on a negative past, remember ye not, he says. Hallelujah. The Lord is challenging Gideon, giving him an assignment to be a mighty man. And Gideon is saying, listen, you don't know my problem. I am the least in my father's house and my father's house is the least. So don't even bring this. There are many preachers today who have so failed in ministry to a point that any word that comes from God, they cast it as a word from the devil. There are many people who have failed in business. There are many champions, custodians of great destinies. That have lost it all. I do not know any great man who has not failed before. When you find one, run away. When you find a great man who has not failed before, you are standing before a risk. There is a failure requirement that becomes an anchor that brings balance and stability to your life in the presence and in the midst of success. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. So dwelling on a negative past can affect you. Many of us, you are listening to me right now in this auditorium, across the overflows and following online. Perhaps this is already a word for you. In the midst of your failure, there is still an apostle there. In the midst of your failure, there is still a prophet there. In the midst of a failure, there is still a businessman. The kingdom financier is still there. Do not think yesterday went away with the gift and the grace and the mantle and the calling. It is still there. Remember ye not. He is redirecting the focus of a people to understand the new that God is doing now. Are we together now? Yes, you cannot discern and understand the prophetic thing God is doing in your family. Apostle, don't tell me about a great life. We've lost three, four, five members of our family and we do not even know who is next. Remember ye not the former things. When he says remember ye not, he's not saying erode it out of your memory. That cannot happen. He's saying do not dwell, do not give it life and strength. Do not dedicate your focus. Do not invest your attention to that which is dead. You only try to water a tree that is dying, but if it is dead, you leave it. Are we together? How about the positive past? The positive past I wrote here can create complacency, can create pride, can create overconfidence, and even indiscipline. Let me take it again. 
dwelling on the positive past, your achievements over dwelling, I would say, over dwelling on your positive past can create complacency, lukewarmness, can create pride, can create overconfidence, and can create a sense of indiscipline. When you dwell on your negative past, the side effect is that you will have fear, discouragement. It will deflate your passion to press. But when you dwell on your positive past, over dwell there, build a monument and a camp around yesterday and its achievement and all its tried, it's able to bring you to a point of complacency, a point of pride, a point of overconfidence and indiscipline. Judges chapter 16, please, from verse 18 to 21. Give it to us. It's the same book of Judges. Now we want to examine another character called Samson. Samson was a warrior par excellence. The source of his strength was a mystery. This man would single-handedly defeat a whole army without seeking for help. And he became so confident upon his achievements of yesterday and now yesteryears. Read verse 18 and 29, follow carefully, and let's learn a lesson there. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he had showed me all his heart. And the lord of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money into her hand. You see why poverty is very bad? Because this woman destroyed the destiny of a great man simply because of money. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his hair. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. Verse 20. The Bible says, and she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Read the remaining part of 20. Ready? One to read. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go up as at other times as before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord had departed from him. Verse 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. Can I tell you, overconfidence has destroyed many people. I will not pray, but the power of God will still move. I will not rehearse like, like, like never before, but I will still do well. I will still be a champion. I will not study scripture, but the grace is already there. I have revelation anyhow. Can I tell you, our world is full of psychophants who clap for you even when you are falling until you finally get to your grave. You must know how to celebrate success and create a boundary and say Lord thank you for the blessings of yesterday but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind whatever it is I press many people do not have the stamina to look away from the uploads of yesterday and remain focused into the vision of the now dwelling on your positive past can destroy it can bring pride. It can bring overconfidence. In the case of Samson, she woke him up and said, the Philistines are upon you. And the Bible said he shook himself like before. I will not read any business book. I've been an astute businessman. I will excel as before. It doesn't matter. I'm a man so loved by people. Doesn't matter how serious I am spiritually or not. Members who come as before. The deception of success is that without any effort to continue, it tries to indoctrinate you into believing that the seasons that are upon you will remain that way forever. Make reference to my teaching, the law of seasons. Remember the dream of Pharaoh, that in every man's life, there is seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. What you do in the years of plenty is what will sustain you. Please listen to that teaching, the law of seasons. I told you that every dry season comes with a letter from rainy season, I am coming. And every rainy season comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. You will not always be a CEO, mm -mm. no matter how great you are. Are we together? Yes. 
Respectfully speaking, there are many people, especially in the arts and entertainment, in sports, who did not know that the seasons in a man's life, there is transition. And you can find someone who may be an excellent goalkeeper, an excellent striker, speaking in terms of soccer, football. And they can enjoy grace and, and splendor for 10, 15, perhaps 20 years. And in one moment, how about political leaders? In one moment, you are a leader and in a matter of minutes, everything, the entire paraphernalia that comes with your position departs. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Remember ye not the former things, great former things. The moment it is former, whether it is great or it is not, you celebrate it, you can reminisce on it so that it helps to add that energy but overdwelling in yesterday. Have you seen people who the only thing they have to tell you is the achievements of yesteryears? I was once anointed, we once do, did mighty crusade. For instance, or I was once a great businessman. I shook hands with this president and that president and you are asking, where were you when seasons changed? You must understand how to navigate prophetic seasons. Otherwise, you would not have longevity of impact. So the prophet is teaching us and he's saying, Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. We have learned so far now that overdwelling on the past, whether positively or negatively, can create an adverse effect on your life and destiny philippians chapter 3 13 and 14 just to buttress on that point paul said brethren i count not myself to have apprehended he says but this one thing i do i like paul forgetting those things which are behind the achievements the pain the failure Apostle, I would have been a great man today, but in 1999, they defrauded me of my business. And it is past. You cannot continue remaining there, whereas there is a demand upon your life and your destiny. You must sustain the ability to wave goodbye to yesterday and all its crowns and all its pain so that you can press. Nobody runs forward looking backward. Have you found such a person that you run, you really intend to run? Say an Olympian and they shoot the gun on your marks, set, and then they shoot the gun and the person is turning back and intends to run and to run and win. Mm -mm. Your focus should be so much so that even looking to the side can distract you. Talk less looking back. Let's finish that scripture. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in Jesus Christ. I consider not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for those things that are before me he said I press hallelujah the next prophetic word from that scripture is behold I like that statement when he now says remember ye not the former things now that he's brought you to a point where you've been detached to yesterday it's success, the crowns, and the pains, the failures all together. He now says, behold. The word behold is a very powerful word. Behold means see with the eyes of your spirit. Behold means conceive as a reality what I want to tell you. Behold means let me have your rapt attention. Now that you have been distracted away from the mundanity of yesterday, behold, let me have your attention. You want to understand what behold means? You have to read the book of Acts that Peter and John were on their way to get beautiful at the hour of prayer. The Bible says they saw a man who, had, who was seated there for a long time, lame. And the man was begging for arms. Let me show you what behold means. And Peter said, look on us. Let me have your attention. And the Bible says Peter fastening his eyes on him said, look on us. Verse 5, now, and he gave heed. That's what it means to behold. He gave heed to them expecting to receive. 
he gave heed to them expecting to receive to receive an instruction to receive a blueprint to receive a pathway when he says behold it means i need your attention spirit soul and body i'm about to deliver something to you that your destiny depends on behold this is a prophetic word. There are many ways God tells us to behold. He will start showing you a certain dream within a certain season. It is him saying, behold, let me have your attention. You've been too distracted. But right now there is something that your ministry needs to do. There is something, there is a formula coming from heaven that spells your dominion for the next 10 years. Behold. Behold, God is speaking to someone. Behold, the next 10 years will not be like the last 10 years. Behold, have you received the prophetic blueprint for business? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for ministry? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for politics? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for that which God is doing in your family? Behold, behold means let me have your attention. For some of you, it's taken you two years to behold because one moment you want to focus and then you remember. Do you know that you can behold for a short time? He looked at Peter and Peter fastened his eyes on Jesus and he said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. While he was focused, he kept walking. But the Bible says the waves, you would think because you are beholding, the waves should stop. They will still be there, but your ability to look away from them and onto Jesus. The waves and the vicissitudes of life have distracted people such that they stop beholding. The reason why he brought that dream last year was because he was trying to get your attention. Do you not know you are a great prophet? Do you not know you are a great apostle? Do you not know you are a great intercessor? Do you not know there is a kingdom financier within you? Do you not know that is a portion of God's program that has been committed to you? But God is calling you to behold. Do not play with this word. It takes a long time for God to get men's attention. Go and read your Bible. There are few men who God got their attention in a moment. For instance, you know how long it took God to negotiate with Abraham until he believed God finally? God had to invent a strategy to get Abraham to believe that he would become the father of nations. You would think just because he was Abraham, he believed. No, study and read your Bible. One night God had to call him and said, Abraham, count the stars. He tried counting and he lost count. Try again. He tried counting and he lost count. He said, the same way you have lost count, that is how your seed will be. And the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. You know how long it takes for God to get the attention of men? There are people who it will take decades for God to finally call them and say, do you know from age five, the dream you started having was me calling you and you are finally saying yes to me at 55. 50 years to behold. So don't you play with this word. When he says behold, he's not just saying use your optical eyes. It takes a level of focus that only God can give to look away from situations and circumstances and to behold but there is a miracle in beholding one of the miracles is that as we behold him we are changed hmm. as we behold him we are changed please listen listen let your heart be open to understand what i'm teaching you tonight the challenge with many people and the reason why it looks like god is not doing so much with you is because you have not mastered the art of beholding beholding can take a long time Beholding can take a long time. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that all that happened to the disciples for three and a half years was their ministry of beholding. They were beholding as they were being changed. Lecture after lecture. Beholding does not just mean see. Sometimes beholding can mean stop what you are doing now for the next five years. That is the price of beholding. Sometimes beholding can mean relocate to another city and remain there until I come to you. Beholding has a serious implication. It can mean suspend what you are doing for now, no matter how productive it is. There are few people who can behold. Is someone learning? Behold can, means, can mean that God can give you a, an instruction 
and say instead of giving 10% or 20% of all your earnings for the next one year, for you it is 80% every there is something I want to teach you that will evolve you into the financial apostle that I'm programming you to become. Beholding is not just your ears. Beholding is not just your eyes. Beholding is your heart and your life. And because the Spirit of God does not struggle with man indefinitely, you have a choice to be so distracted that you distract his presence away from your life. He will respect you. He will honor you, but the danger is that you will be losing relevance to a season that is coming. Hallelujah. There are many sermons that have come out from beholding more than studying. There are many songs that have come from beholding more than studying. There are many mantles that have rested upon people. What was the price to carry Elijah's mantle? If you can see me, not if you can talk. You become a talkative while I'm rising. You will remain there and the prophets, the sons of the prophets were talkatives, but they did not know how to behold. Here was a man who said, I need something. A double portion he said ah my dear son you have asked a hard thing but if you can see me was he not looking at him and the Bible says suddenly he saw a chariot of fire that came to carry him and he, he stood there focused while he was standing there the sons of the prophet were shouting distracting doing all kinds of things he, he remained focused and that mantle fell upon him. He said, my father, my father, the chariots of, uh, the chariots of, of horsemen and the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And that mantle fell upon him. He carried it and went to the Jordan. And he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he, he, he struck the, the mantle and the Jordan parted hither and thither. Proximity does not necessarily mean you are beholding. How many of you know that there are people who can be so worried their position is to look at you? Someone can literally be looking at you like this and that is a sign that he has left you because he's so distracted. He's just thinking, this fuel now, this issue now. And yet the person is looking at you and you will think that the person is looking at you, it means that he's giving you the attention. And the person is thinking of something far away from church. Behold. Ah, very powerful word. So remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Next instruction. Behold. Behold. See. Dedicate your life and your destiny. Be prepared to receive. Be prepared to understand. Be prepared to be engaged prophetically. And then the next instruction is I do a new thing. This is very, very powerful. I do a new thing. I do a new thing. He never said I will say a new thing. He says I will do a new thing. But let me tell you something about the way God operates. You know by now that God never does what you want or what you pray for. No, he does what you pray for that is consistent with what he has said. The only thing that moves the hand of God are his words. Genesis 21, 1. Do not forget this scripture for as long as you live. Let's read it together. Genesis 21, 1. One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. One more time. And the Lord visited Sarah. Not just as she wanted. He visits as he has said. He does as he has spoken. He visits as he has said. He does as he has spoken. So if your desire is not captured within his speaking, there is no performance. The performance of God in the life of a man is only possible when your desire is consistent with something he has said. The assignment of the power of God is to make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. To make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. To make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. So when God says his power moves to honor what he has said so that there will be a performance, there will be a manifestation of those things 
that he has said. Are we together now? This is why the word of God is your basis for receiving anything in the kingdom. If you cannot find what God has said, there is no basis for God's commitment towards you because he has submitted his reputation below. He has exalted his word, the Bible says, even above his office, above his name. You have to learn this. So when he says, I will do a new thing, another expression for it is that find out the things I have said I will do because it is what I have said that I will do. I refer you to my teaching, Exceeding Great and Precious Promises. There we considered how the, the rich deposit all of the systems of advantage that have been provided for the believer in Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. But you must know them whereby are given to us these great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. If you are together, shout a loud amen. amen. Behold, I do a new thing, a performance. But you see, another word I want us to consider in that sentence is the word new. Everybody here I presume understands English. The word new means sometimes an unfamiliar path. Are we together now? New may not necessarily mean a repetition of something that has happened. New always suggests a virgin dimension. Something that you have never, is not captured in your memory of yesterday. That means there is a technique and a technology for approaching new things. Hallelujah. Behold, I do a new thing. The new, I wrote here, prophetic season before us demands three major things. If we want to see the new manifested in our lives, there is a prophetic season. An old season is wrapping up in our lives across the body of Christ and a new season is opening right before us. But a new season requires three things. Number one, discernment and flexibility to experience the new the first thing you need is discernment and flexibility please write it down discernment and flexibility your spirit and your mind that floodity of mind and thoughts is very important if you are to experience the new hallelujah in mark chapter 2 Mark chapter 2, give us 11 and 12. Mark chapter 2, please. Now, this was the man who was lame. Jesus looks at him and says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into your house. Verse 12, the Bible says, and immediately he arose, he took up the bed and went forth before them all, in so much that they were all amazed and they glorified God saying, we never saw it in this fashion. This is what it means to be new. It comes in a fashion that you are not used to. You will need discernment so that you don't call evil good. Just because God is not moving in a way he moved before does not mean he's not the one moving. You see, getting used to how God moved sometimes can limit you from discerning how he is moving now. If you were there, in my example again that I gave earlier on, if you were there when the Red Sea parted, every time you see a sea, you start smiling, especially if you have a rod in your hand. Except that the strategy for your victory at that point will not be the parting of the Red Sea. How many people have remained before Jordan for a long time? Look at the man in John chapter 5. I always make reference to this man. The Bible says he was lying down there for 38 years. There was no man to help him sadly, but Jesus came to introduce to him that the way to be healed by the stirring of the water is only one. There are many other strategies. Another strategy is when Jesus comes to you, your season has happened. You don't have to wait for one year. In his absence, you can make do with whatever formula that is there, but Jesus is able to step in in one moment. This is very powerful. 
the principles of business diligently followed can prosper you with time it is true that that is a very a biblically recommended pathway but i submit to you by the authority of scripture that is not the only way when jesus comes he can change the dynamics of certain realities for instance by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow is not an economic principle but it is a principle that has has validity from scripture hmm. who am i speaking to behold i do a new thing that means your life will be a wonder people will say this is the only way to make children great this is the only way to get land and build a house this is the only way to do ministry and yet god will be redirecting you through virgin parts that don't make sense except that the result will be exceptional you it will be in a way that people will say we have never seen it in this manner you have to be flexible listen you see this is the reason why in followership there are two dimensions number one follow them who have who through faith and patience have obtained the promise why do we follow them because of the advantage of experience there is a cyclical movement to life this is where age eldership and experience plays are we together even if you are Samuel who will be a great prophet you will need Eli to help you interpret the voice of God because he has had it before. And God will usually speak to you using the voice of Eli. However, there are certain virgin moves of God that only happens when you look unto Jesus. That is another way to follow. There is follow them, but there is looking unto Jesus. Because there are times that he moves, both the old and the young stand at a loss because it is a path that has never been followed. Listen, if you are a prophetic person, discern what I am telling you. There are many, many people who respectfully speaking, loyalty to how God moved yesterday is stopping them from aligning with how he is moving now. Hallelujah. Yes. It is true that he once spat on the ground. And made spittle out of it. But that is not the only way. No. Many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded here. Yours is for your hearts to be open. That's why I love the, 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 the rendition here. They are songs of worship. They said I will follow the lamb. But they also said I will follow the lion. Do you know it's the same person? So why are you mentioning two dimensions to the same person? Because the way the lion leads you is not the way the lamb will lead you, although it is still the same person. You don't have to stretch your ears to hear the lion. The roar is loud enough. But you will need dedication and concentration to hear the lamb speak. I am meek and I am lowly. There was a wind and the voice was not in the wind. There was an earthquake and the voice was not in the earthquake. And then after all of that, there was a still, small voice. Elijah, what are you doing here? But when fire was coming from heaven, it was not silent. It came in such a mighty way that it came and consumed everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. We need a generation of men and women who understand how to discern. To discern, to discern. The bankruptcy of discernment has gotten many to a point where they are not flexible and they do not understand what God is doing. It is true that you have never seen a child prophesy, but one day your child of four years old can look at you and say, Daddy, don't do business with that man. Go and pray for two hours. And it does not make sense. His age, you are used to matured elderly people with ministerial pedigree speaking to you. But God decides to use an earthen vessel that does not make sense. And yet the most powerful prophetic instruction in your life may come from that child. If you are a king and you are looking for a prophet and you ignore the slave girl, you may never find the prophet. You must know how to hear the king the prophet but you must also know how to hear the slave girl because sometimes it's the advice from the slave girl that connects you to Elijah are we together now say discernment one more time say discernment there are times 
that you are preparing to go and do business or go and do whatever and the Spirit of God constrains you and in that constraint watch this in that constraint something begins to happen to you watch what happens to you you begin to have a feeling go for a three-day fasting listen can I tell you sometimes it will it does not make sense to anybody including you just the foolishness of obeying God you go and lock yourself first day nothing happens you just keep praying lord you asked me to come here second day nothing happens by the third day a veil that did not open for your grandfather a veil that did not open for your father that vista into the prophetic destiny of the family just opens and god says this is the reason why everybody has failed in your family this is the reason why people did not rise even though they were missionaries correct this adjust this step into this eternal covenant and this consecration and you will emerge out of nowhere and men who do not understand this thing will say from whence did you come we we do not know you in this fashion discernment you have been taught that businessmen don't pray they just think but the formula designed for your own advancement because of the field wherein you have found yourself you will pray as if you're a prayer warrior and yet you're a businessman it is a strategy for your victory flexibility 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 discernment the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what israel ought to do as a result the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command i always want to make reference respectfully speaking about 10 maybe 15 years or so ago the Lord spoke to me I, I shared this with with every sense of responsibility and he told me that the next decade of the church as at then that it would not just be by sales of tapes and CDs I remember and he said to take our audio materials as raw as it is and to put it in the internet through the social media platforms in their infancy not the best of production but he said my angel will take it to the nations and this is how I will announce you the flexibility to do it for someone God is following an unusual path with you just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong did you hear what I said just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong mm. Just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong. This is a word for someone. Just because you are alone, alone in prayer, alone in giving, alone in the sacrifice. Everybody has gotten a job except you. Just because you are alone, they don't know what you are confronting. There are eight long altars that have vowed that nobody rises and God is submitting you. Do you know there are many things that God calls us to do that in doing them the benefit is beyond ourselves. He's, you are looking through the loins of prophecy and you are seeing your children and your children's children and he's saying for their sake go on the fast for their sake build capacity Elijah you are a prophet but eat the journey is far you'd have no idea where you are going he ate a little and he slept he woke him again he said eat it means pray it means study it means get knowledge it means build the relationships now you don't know how far you are going you may not have the luxury of this man you are seeing now invest in relationships invest in prayer a time will come the demand of the nations upon you you will not even have time to stretch as much as you used to you will drink from the residue of your investment This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where my life is changed. 
listen I will share with you something to bless your heart do you know how I finally settled here in Abuja for three years God began to speak to me that the season a dimension of my ministry and my work was coming to an end and for three years I didn't know whether I was Abuja whether I was just I just kept praying that dissatisfaction I loved Zaria with all my heart I was used to that I mean people were coming literally from all over the world it was at a point of ministry excellence and results like you have not seen and yet God was saying this is just a layer there is another layer remember ye not the former things you can like yesterday too much you will lose tomorrow because of yesterday listen I returned back from I think South Africa had a meeting in Lagos COVID was just about to start now Abuja has always been second home but not for ministry I didn't know whether I was Abuja whether it was it was just perhaps maybe among my people to just go but where I, it was just in my heart I knew I was having visions they were not yet clear you don't it does not become clear from the beginning it is not an unusual experience you are having that's how we all pass through it anybody who understands building prophetic destiny anything that comes with clarity from beginning is a sign that you are in error God will always demand faith there is a sign to that vision that will be hidden is your commitment that will cause him to unravel it God is a God that hides himself in light he will give you an experience and hide it back to draw you Moses he sees a bush that is burning but not consumed and yet it does not have any sound and then he says I will turn aside and see this great sight and when God saw that he now turned aside he said Moses take off your shoes it's not about the burning bush there is more but I needed to use it to get your attention hallelujah please play the strings for me Listen, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you by the Spirit of God, I'm giving you a compass to navigate the days that are now before us because there will be a divergence. Respectfully speaking, you will find out that many, many lampstands will suddenly go down and then others from nowhere. Yet there are those that will remain burning because of the intelligence to discern and to navigate prophetic seasons just because you were greatly demanded of and for yesterday does not mean the demand will remain tomorrow the sustainability of impact in the kingdom is predicated upon your ability to discern seasons he made lights and those lights were for seasons and for years discernment i remember I returned from Lagos and then I left for London we were about the last set of people to leave London as I came to Abuja I think preparing to rush back to Zaria for a miracle service or somewhere that was when they announced the lockdown the global lockdown ladies and gentlemen that lockdown you see that was it oh I said no there has to be a reason Lord what am I going to do with myself now if I had left, I was considering using another flight. I would have been trapped in London for three months, roaming around the streets of London. But then God brought me and as soon as I came, I know that God is a God of purpose. And I just said, okay, my people, God bless you. When COVID is over, we'll have our time. It was that time. Finally, Lord, is it Abuja? Is it, is it just? Is it where? And I was praying and the spirit of prayer came upon me. And it was at that time I just saw the map of Abuja. I said, that is it. The Lord instructed me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. I got these four maps and I was praying like a madman. Do you have the discernment and the flexibility to receive the prophetic blueprint for the next level? Which venue would be used? That one is another story where the people will come from that is another story hmm. hallelujah hmm. i began to pray laying hands on those maps every day praying 
Lord, when you give the word, great is the company of them that publish it. I may not see the wind, I may not see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. Mine is to pray, mine is to prepare. The Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. Holy Spirit, this is what you are meant for. Now I yield myself to you. Direct the course of my life. When you see any man looking like a sign and a wonder, let me tell you, they have only learned how to move with the wind. The Bible says the wind blows where it listed you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming for somebody God can just call you you have been fasting for every day but that one day fast is where the blueprint of your destiny will be revealed but do you have the flexibility the flexibility the flexibility it was time to turn water to wine the Bible says the wine finished and then they came, Mary led them to Jesus. Watch this. And Jesus said, are you sure you really want new wine? Yes, we want new wine. Embarrassment is imminent. He said, all right, be ready to do what you've never done. Get six pots. Never has wine been formed that way. No, wine is formed through fermentation. Is that true? And now he's using another formula. And then they filled six pots. He said, fetch it. Don't taste it. Don't verify. Just be on your way. The Bible says, as they went in shame, what if nothing happened? Do you know they would have killed them at that point? In a feast, embarrassment is there. You now come and add to it. But as they went, in the foolishness of obedience, a miracle began to happen. The Bible says, when the rulers tasted it, they said, ah, what is this? People bring their best wine at first. That means there is a kind of wine the church has not tasted. Ah, there is a kind, we, we thank God for our fathers. We thank God for generals, both in the Bible and in history. But I assure you by the authority of scripture, there is a kind of wine that must be tasted before his majesty returns. And there are men and women, ordinary men, ordinary psalmists, ordinary prophets, ordinary apostles, ordinary businessmen. Listen, we don't know how to make wine, but we know how to carry it. Ah, we can carry it to nations. We are not the ones making the wine, but we can carry the wine. We can carry the wine. We can carry it to nations. We can carry it across the globe. And no power in existence sustains what it takes to stop the transference of that wine. The wine is not from us. We are not manufacturers of wine. We only take it to the rulers of the earth. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want This is the place of encounter Do to me what you want This is the place where my life is changed Do to me what you want Hear me when you read John chapter 2 and verse 11, it leaves us with a powerful statement. It says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him. What was the miracle? To find ordinary men who started with water and then as they went the water turned to wine and they served the nations you would think the credit will go to the men of god i say it again everyone you taste that is unusual was not manufactured by joshua selman was not manufactured by koinonia the songs that you hear men and women like me sir dunsin singing we don't manufacture them we only take them as and serve them to the nations the formula listen the formula when it has to do with walking with God, creativity is not required. It is alignment and obedience. It is when we have to do with invading the cosmos. That is when we bring creativity. When it has to do with God, your creativity is not important. It is your alignment and your obedience. 
then when you receive from his presence you now add creativity to that which you have received hallelujah behold I do a new thing you want to navigate prophetic seasons in your life you must understand the power of the new the first key is discernment and flexibility let me give you the second very quickly the second key when you want to experience new things in your life is that you will need strength and courage strength and courage <laughs> Joshua chapter 1 please 5 to 7 strength and courage there is nobody who is able to explore virgin dimensions in the spirit and become men of power and stature when you do not understand strength and courage Joshua 1 5 to 7 1 5 to 7 1 5 to 7 thank you there shall not any man be able to stand before thee speaking to Joshua all the days of your life I hope you know he had never assumed leadership in this capacity the Bible starts by saying Moses my servant is dead get over it I love Moses I use Moses but that formula is dead good things can die it's not only evil that can die God is a God of evolution and transition as far as his work with the saints is concerned there are many good things he may need to shelve because there are greater things coming it is not only evil or bad things that are thrown aside as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake you verse 6 he says be strong he's speaking to a man who is about to assume enormous office a, 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 an office that would demand I mean the continuity the manifestation of prophecy depend on his leadership and yeah he's speaking to the people no idea of the battles that were before him and Joshua was told to be strong and of a good courage for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance i hope you know the inheritance is talking about hard giants there and yet god did not even he was talking as if the giants were already dead share the inheritance which i swear unto the fathers to give you seven only be thou strong and if and very courageous be strong be very courageous can i tell you men who will understand navigate and excel as far as the prophetic shift that is happening is concerned are people who have strength strength and courage courage to stand alone courage to be controversial <clears throat> you cannot be agreeable and step into prophecy hallelujah he comes to meet a young lady minding her business preparing for her marriage and he says young lady you have found favor with God blessed are you among all women you would think after that blessing she should be announced she should be he called it favor I've studied Mary's life from that journey until Jesus have I still don't know what is favor in that statement I understand giving birth to Jesus but the controversies that surrounded Mary from that time Joseph wanted to quietly leave her she was about to lose her marriage lose her life and yet God calls that favor so pain can be favor there are moments that it does not look like it and yet God calls it favor be careful what you call what what is happening to you ask God for the name to use for it because you can see pain that is a ladder for your ascendance and you call it pain but God calls it favor you would see Jesus dying on the cross you call that death but he calls that the path to victory today when we go to heaven we don't just use crowns to know Jesus because there are men and elders who have crowns but when everybody lifts his hand the one who has the scar that which was a, an emblem of shame today is the symbol that is that is the signature of his majesty when Jesus appeared he he said to Thomas's doubting not by saying look at my head he said put your hand so the scars the nails 
you would have seen him three four days ago and you would have assumed that such a weak Jesus the foolish man at the other side of the cross you heard what the guy was saying too and the other one rebuked him and said we are criminals here for a just reason this man has not done anything So don't call your lack of food. It's not poverty. It's not always poverty. You may be calling it poverty. God is calling it training. Training for where he's taking you. So that you will learn how to abound. You will learn how to do with plenty and with nothing. Are we together now? Believers must learn how to interpret the writings of the world from the lens of the spirit. Otherwise, you will lose prophetic seasons because they do not come in an appearance that you are used to. You need courage. Say courage you need strength yes the bible says by the strength of an ox is much good gotten the strength of an ox you see how an ox plows the field for hours yet it is making the ridges the strength of an ox is what you will need in this end time there are times you have to stand alone for many years before others join you there are times you have to see ahead of every other person, maybe in your family, maybe in your business, and literally be there for a long time before people begin to join you one by one. Do you have the courage to be alone? Strength and courage. Psalm 27, 1 and 3. 1 to 3. Psalm 27. We are looking at the second key. I like the psalmist. You know, I've told you this thing. This psalmist man, I really look forward to seeing him in heaven. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The man suffered too much till he became wise. Hallelujah. Do you know that his wisdom came on the strength of his cars? The psalmist. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Did the Bible not say, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise? It says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you need courage. In this seeker-friendly world, there are many, many times you will have to walk against the odds. People do not have to believe in you to succeed. No. We live in a world where everybody wants to be free of any, you just want to be accepted by everybody regardless. No, sir. The way of the kingdom is a narrow path. There are times you will have to take certain steps because of your conviction, because of courage. It may not be the best. But that may be the path a mark for your greatness. Hallelujah. Courage strength number three experiencing new dimensions demand obedience this is a serious one obedience king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you king of kings lord of lords Faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Emmanuel. All the world is calling your name, Emmanuel. When you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face, Emmanuel. When you come again.
listen there are some of you right now you are beginning to enter very deep seasons you are in a kairos moment in your life and it's not something that will just be for weeks the Holy Spirit is going to hold your hand and lead you through dimensions sometimes you may not understand I raise that song because I want to prophesy to you that you be strong in the midst of it I charge you by the Spirit be strong you will pray alone many times you will fast alone many times the stage will not be there for men to give you the applaud but you need stamina and discipline stamina and discipline to build capacity hear me you are building capacity for the days ahead you are eating for the journey that is ahead this is the word of the lord to you build capacity the holy ghost is going to hold your hands he will draw you through realms and dimensions you have not seen he said call on me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not 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 listen there is a kind of warrior God is building it's an arsenal that the world has not seen there are hybrid spiritual combinations grace upon grace there are certain graces that were alone but God is matching them with other graces because there is a kind of warrior he's building listen to what I'm telling you uh, you, you will look at them and wonder are you an apostle are you an, a prophet we, we cannot describe what exactly you are there are hybrid combinations the hunger of people is driving them to touch graces they are touching graces the grace of an intercessor the grace of a financier the grace of a prophet the grace of an apostle the grace of a watchman and that hybrid combination is forming a very dangerous believer that God will be using as a battle axe in this end time. Listen, you see. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.